we are uh, discussing the special uh, uh, specialties of the Hungarian transfer pricing legislation. And uh, interestingly, at the end of the uh, presentation, which is half an hour, uh, I will speak about a couple of things uh, in relation to my experience, uh, because I am an expert witness in uh, TP lawsuits. Possibly that would be also interesting for you. Gabi. Yes, um, first of all, uh, I would like to introduce you the basics of the uh, Hungarian uh, legislation. Transfer pricing is a hot topic uh, in Hungary for many years. Beside the VAT, most of the uh, challenges are connected to uh, transfer pricing. If you go to the next slide, uh, then uh, you can see that Hungary is the member uh, of the OECD and the EU. Uh, we follow strictly the development uh, of the BEPS actions through the uh, EU uh, directives like the Anti-Tax uh, Avoidance Directive, the CBC reporting, and uh, also the automatic exchange of uh, information. In Hungary, the arm's length principle applies uh, to intra-group transactions. That means that all intra-group transactions must be remunerated at fair market value. If the parties fail to do so, then they have the choice to adjust the value of the transactions and book uh, the transactions uh, according to their arm's length value, or the taxpayer can choose uh, that it adjusts simply its uh, corporate tax-based calculation in a way as it would reflect uh, that the transactions would have been um, conducted under arm's length uh, conditions. So there's a choice, you book it um, in line with the arm's length principle of the transaction, or you can make uh, adjustment calculations simply in your corporate tax base uh, uh, calculation. Uh, the adjustment must be uh, made not only for a corporate tax base, but also for local business tax uh, base and also for uh, innovation contribution as well. The arm's length principle applies to related parties. In Hungary, the threshold is 50% uh, plus. Uh, so it means that if anybody uh, has direct, uh, in a direct or an indirect way more than 50% uh, ownership or voting rights in another company, then they, uh, they are related parties. Or they have, uh, if a taxpayer, two taxpayers have um, common owners, then they constitute as uh, related parties as well. Also, the appoint uh, and the dismiss uh, of the majority of the board of directors and supervisor board um, shows that there must be a related party um, classification. Documentation uh, must be prepared in Hungary. At the moment, uh, not the BEPS related master file and local file uh, applies. In Hungary, there is a choice what kind of documentation is prepared. One is a standalone uh, transfer pricing documentation, which includes all the elements that must be put uh, uh, in a general master file and local file, or there is a um, possibility to um, apply the EU TPD uh, requirements. So if there is a master file available on group level, that can be used also for uh, Hungarian transfer pricing purposes. The general rule is that, that all transactions must be uh, documented, all um, qualifying agreements must be documented. However, there are some exemptions. Uh, Cost recharges don't need to be uh, documented. Transactions with value less than 160,000 euros shouldn't be uh, documented. Transactions covered with an APA shouldn't be um, documented separately. This means in practice that if there is an APA available for a certain transaction, then uh, that transaction shouldn't be uh, documented uh, for uh, transfer pricing purposes. However, if there are other type of transactions um, um, within the group, then they must be uh, subject to documentation purposes. Let me give you an example. If the uh, main activity of the uh, taxpayer is, is a commercial activity, and then the commercial activity is covered uh, by an APA, no documentation must be prepared for that. 
However, if there is a management uh, service charge from the group uh, to the local uh, entity, then there must be documentation um, available um, for that uh, management uh, transaction. Um, money transfers shouldn't be documented as well because uh, you uh, won't be able to say anything more uh, than 100 Hungarian foreign is 100 Hungarian foreign, so no additional explanation must be uh, put there. In Hungary, safe harbor rules uh, are available in connection with low value added uh, services. In this regard, Hungary follows EU Joint Transfer Pricing Forum's recommendation, and um, it says that if low value added services are uh, charged at cost plus 3 to 10 percent, then uh, no detailed documentation and benchmarking analysis must be prepared. The transfer pricing documentation uh, must be readily available until the date of submitting the uh, corporate, tax, uh, corporate tax return. And if uh, tax audit starts, then uh, the documentation must be handed over to the uh, tax authority within three days. Let's talk about the uh, language of the documentation uh, in Hungary. Um, the transfer pricing documentations can be uh, prepared in Hungarian, English, German, and French. All uh, languages can be used for transfer pricing purposes. If you prepare the benchmarking analysis, uh, then uh, in certain cases, interquartile range must be, um, uh, must be applied to uh, identify the arm's length uh, remuneration. APAs are available in Hungary. Uh, unilateral, bilateral, multilateral um, agreements uh, are available, but uh, based on our experience and based on the communication of the local tax authority, there are no uh, finished decisions on bilateral and multilateral agreements. CBC reporting is uh, introduced uh, in Hungary. Uh, the law was um, voted in uh, the beginning of May. So CBC reporting is mandatory in uh, Hungary as well. And uh, Hungary has uh, signed the um, multilateral competent, uh, competent authority uh, agreement. And also uh, there is an um, automatic exchange of information um, in our legislation in connection with the CBC reporting and also the APAs and uh, tax rulings. Uh, let's go for the next slide. Uh, we have uh, collected the penalties uh, which are quite high in Hungary in connection with, um, with, the, uh, with, the, with transfer pricing. One risk is the lack of uh, documentation uh, the penalty is uh, around um, 6,500 euro per transaction if the documentation is uh, not ready. If there is an adjustment, uh, transfer pricing adjustment, then the penalty uh, is 50% um, of, uh, uh, of the additional tax uh, to be paid, plus late payment interest is charged as well. Uh, but due to the fact that the um, um, national bank's base rate is very low, this is not a significant uh, amount. Later on, we will talk about uh, the, the mutual agreements and the arbitrations, but there are unfortunately no agreements in this regard in Hungary uh, yet. On the next slide, we have summarized some of the topics that are um, interesting and uh, what we have seen during uh, our, um, our uh, work, what were the uh, challenges made by the uh, local tax authority. So although the tax liability exists uh, since, two, uh, since 2003, there are still taxpayers without the necessary top, uh, TP documentation. So that's a big risk uh, in uh, Hungary. However, the biggest issue during a tax audit is the lack of support from the center of the group, which means that during the documentation preparation period, no proper or precise answers are received from the center. So the local financial people put together uh, the studies based on the information they have uh, available. 
And uh, when the study is ready and the tax authority comes, they uh, hand over this study uh, to the tax authority. Then the tax authority asks questions. Uh, these questions uh, are then uh, forwarded to the center. The center feels the emergency in the situation and starts answering uh, the questions. But the answers in many cases are different or even contradictory uh, to the study handed over uh, to the tax authority. And um, that's the moment uh, when the taxpayers are losing the trust uh, of the local tax authority. And that's the moment when a long and expensive debate uh, starts between the taxpayer and the tax authority. The other very, very uh, easy uh, challenge uh, for the uh, tax authority is that when the taxpayer hand over uh, and hand over the ready uh, transfer pricing study, where it states that the local um, operation is a limited risk uh, operation and the local company gets remuneration based on cost plus, um, uh, cost plus. for example, 5% is added, but on overall level, uh, the uh, local taxpayer generates loss. Uh, the TP study may include some explanations regarding the reasons of loss making, but those explanations are mainly due to uh, materialization of the risks, not controlled by the company. So mo in most cases, uh, when uh, there are contradictory uh, statements in the transfer pricing study, they are very easily detected by the local tax authority. The uh, other easy challenge is uh, the case when the tax authority asks for uh, the organizational chart of the local uh, entity and they identify a group of uh, employees who are providing services uh, to the region or to other members of the group and there are no remuneration for their activity at all. So the missing revenue is, uh, is identified very easily uh, by the local tax authority. Um, in uh, some cases, the cash pooling agreements are also um, challenged by the local uh, tax authority, and they are stating that um, debit uh, interest rates are not possible in uh, intra-group um, financing agreements. In case if the, um, if the company who is collecting the money, collecting the money is not uh, a bank itself. So debit uh, rates are not uh, preferred by the uh, local tax authority. And uh, based on our experience, the local tax authority uh, always try to test uh, primarily the uh, Hungarian taxpayer independently if the local, um, local company is the uh, more complex entity within the value chain. So in many, many cases this may uh, cause uh, conflicts and uh, that may um, be also a problem during the uh, tax audit. But let's talk about the uh, court cases, Shandor. Okay, the next slide is my slide about the, my experiences on court cases. Uh, I'm an expert witness, witness uh, uh, as well, which needs a special license in Hungary. And uh, any parties in the, in the court case, lawsuits could ask uh, uh, an independent opinion from uh, the expert witness. However, the judge uh, shall designate uh, the uh, expert witness. There is a super, Supreme Court decision uh, saying that uh, in the case of transfer pricing uh, issues, uh, the judges should use uh, uh, the services of ex expert witness because the judges are not able to uh, consider all aspects of uh, transfer pricing issues. Frankly, the role of the expert witness is a little bit different than in the case of a, an advisor, because I uh, shall have a form a balanced opinion. I shall be open for all arguments and try to measure uh, them, try to uh, 
uh, try to support uh, uh, the the argument or uh, by by facts and uh, circumstances. And if uh, if it, it, it if it fails in that case, uh, I, uh, I should uh, say that this is uh, not applicable. Uh, the clear opinion is very important in the case of an uh, expert witness because the judge does not have a real expertise in transfer pricing. And for the decision of, of, the, of, the, of the judge, a clear uh, standpoint is absolutely necessary. I am entitled to give a professional opinion on, uh, on transfer pricing. I am not entitled to give uh, any opinion relating to legal issues. However, I, I like very much, you know, the, uh, the designation letters receiving from a judge uh, when the first question is what is the role of the OECD guidelines in, in Hungary and how it should be applied and how it should be considered at all, which is typically a, a legal issue. Now, so these are the main uh, main uh, experience, uh, experiences I had uh, during these court cases. For example, the main is that if a company uh, or the tax authority do not have a proper database, they are using uh, industry averages. Uh, uh, in Hungary, the tax authority is using the Amadeus database. However, however, we know that the tax authority do not have uh, the uh, subscription to uh, Bloomberg or Moody's or uh, any other financial databases. So that's why that, for example, the Hungarian tax office is using uh, the statistics of the issued by the National Bank of Hungary relating to uh, interest. And the tax authority is using these sort of interest or statistics uh, when considering or investigating financial transactions. Uh, you know that there are five main factors uh, fixed by the OECD guidelines. What are the main uh, features of uh, compatibility? And frankly, uh, the industry averages and this sort of, uh, of, uh, of interest average uh, uh, published by the National Bank of Hungary uh, it cannot be treated as a comparable because we do not have any any detailed and detailed uh, figures relating to the transactions, and because the uh, transfer pricing guidelines is is about the comparison uh, between tra transactions, that's why that uh, uh, my standpoint in all uh, TP uh, uh, lawsuits is that the. Uh, approach of the tax authority is not uh, acceptable. However, the same can be, uh, uh, can be seen in the, in the case when a, a taxpayer do not have real databases or the service provider for the taxpayers who are preparing the trust pricing studies that do not have also uh, databases. They are using industry averages, but behind of the averages they do not have real uh, uh, itemized uh, information on the included companies, and therefore there it is mm, it is impossible to uh, to uh, compare or to judge whether or not uh, the the sample uh, can be treated as a comparables, and they are meet with the five factors of the uh, of the uh, OECD uh, guidelines. The low quality, uh, the, the recharacterization of the transaction, that's another thing. Sometimes uh, it is very usual in, in Hungary that the first approach is the formal approach. What is written in the contract? And when I uh, starting to investigate the uh, given case in that uh, we, uh, two times I, I reached the point that, uh, that uh, uh, the real transaction is not the not that one which was discussed by the tax uh, authority or discussed by the taxpayer, and uh, therefore it's very crucial that the uh, 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 that the formal approach is not the not the first one and do not have a priority. 
uh, I have an experience that uh, there is a, uh, uh, all the, uh, that the taxpayers uh, take these studies uh, uh, has a low, have a low quality. What could it mean? Uh, the low quality also could, uh, could uh, uh, coming from the fact that uh, the taxpayer do not have real data, data information, compar comparable information. Uh, there are some uh, cases where I, 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 I discovered that uh, uh, a very simple uh, methodology was behind of the preparation of the TP uh, study, a copy-paste. Copy-paste, they found a, a TP study somewhere and they uh, tried to modify uh, in a, a very easy way, but uh, it uh, led to the uh, situation that the whole TP study is not consistent, not clear, uh, weak or no arguments in the TP study to support you know, why the given method was used. And uh, uh, sometimes I, I had the experience that the, that the applicable or using the, the methods are not correct. So the wrong use is uh, sometimes was my experience. And frankly, later than uh, after this, uh, the tax investigation, the court's case starts, uh, it's uh, not a big uh, advantage to start uh, to change with, with, uh, with changing the method, with changing uh, uh, the approach, and 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 uh, raising new arguments in front of the court, because in that case you will lose the trust of the court. Uh, it is typical that the judges uh, have a limited experience and knowledge, uh, and if if you leave uh, the case uh, without. Uh, uh, in the hands of the of the judges. In that case, the outcome is very uncertain. So that's why that uh, my advice is that you need uh, to ask uh, the help of uh, an expert witness, but not directly. You should ask the judge to designate an expert witness. Uh, frankly, my experience is that expert witness is very great tool uh, for the for the uh, ex uh, uh, the judges are very grateful for the expert witness. Uh, they are trust in the expert witness, therefore that could uh, uh, be very decisive. I mean that the opinion of the expert witness could be very decisive uh, uh, for, the, for the judge. Uh, the tax office, it's, uh, my experience is that in Hungary there is no manual screening at the end of the of the investigation or, or when the tax authorities investigate a transaction. Which means that the tax office do not uh, uh, da uh, double check, does not double check, you know, the five uh, factors of the comparab uh, comparables, what is prescribed by the OECD guidelines. And uh, uh, so in that case, that's easy to challenge uh, the opinion of the tax office in such cases. The tax office is not interested at all to designate an expert witness, because that means that uh, another uh, uh, point of view could be uh, could uh, go into the picture, and the tax office is not happy about that. So my lessons on the on all of these is that it is advisable to ask the judge to designate an expert witness, because that could uh, 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 speed up the, uh, the lawsuit and, and could, uh, could lead to a clear uh, standpoint for the judge. Try to include all the proofs and arguments during a tax audit, because later you will lose the trust of the, of the court. In, uh, very important to use databases uh, and not uh, industry averages, uh, and all the statements, opinions, arguments you have shall be supported by proofs, uh, because sometimes my experience is that uh, there are statements uh, from, from any, uh, any parties, tax authority, tax uh, payer, but it is not supported by proofs. And you should be very systematic, consistent, and clear 
in your approaches and arguments. And finally, uh, in the last uh, slide of our presentation, uh, I just uh, uh, give you our pictures because I like pictures. I'm the sponsor of the uh, transfer pricing uh, uh, practice in Hungary. This is a benchmarking center and uh, Gabi Nagy is the head. Uh, we have uh, uh, fully dedicated uh, uh, tax experts who are dealing with uh, transfer pricing and the other thing is that we combined legal, uh, the transfer pricing services with legal experts, restructuring experts, valuation experts and IFRS experts because that was uh, uh, required by, by the uh, challenges of the tax authorities and uh, by the assignments of our clients. So thank you. Uh, Sander, we have a question from the audience. Uh, if you can address it, please. Uh, so the question is, when is it expected that master file, local file, as per BAP section 13 will be required in Hungary? Mm -hmm. uh, we expect that Hungary will move uh, very fast uh, in this regard. Um, I'm quite sure that uh, within a very short period of time it will be introduced. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, for 2016 uh, you have to finish uh, the transfer pricing studies by the end of this May. So for uh, 2016 it is not um, um, uh, applicable. But uh, for the future, I think it will be introduced uh, until the end of uh, 2017 or the beginning of 2018. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, by means of introduction, my name is Anna Maria Vasile. I am the assistant manager of the Romanian Trust and Pricing Team in Bazaars. In the first session of our presentation, we will be discussing about the trust and pricing legislation in Romania, which suffered significant changes in the last years and brings forward a series of challenges for the Romanian taxpayers that are involved in intercompany transactions with their related parties. Afterwards, I will pass on to my colleague, Yuri Kaliu, Senior Manager of the Romanian Transfer Pricing Team in Mazars, to give you some insight on tax audits, which are increasing exponentially in the recent years. Uh, we can move on to the next slide now. Uh, to give you a brief history on the Romanian Transfer Pricing legislation, we could generally say that this subject is quite new in Romania, and has its roots mainly since 2008, when National Agency for Fiscal Administration issued order number 222 that brought a series of rules mainly, mainly related to the structure of the transfer pricing file. It was limited basically to what a TP file should contain in order to provide enough understanding for the tax authorities of the intercompany transactions that were subject to a tax audit. Even if until recent years such practice was limited and Romania is not a member of OECD, the local legislation made reference to the OECD TP guidelines as to be applicable in Romania as well. In uh, 2016, National Agency for Fiscal Administration issued order number 442 amending order 222 uh, from 2008 and bringing forward a series of changes. This reference is basically a milestone related to transfer pricing legislation in Romania because starting with the fiscal year 2016, all large taxpayers that exceed certain thresholds in terms of the value of the intercompany transactions must prepare their TP documentation on an annual basis by 25th of March, that is the date for the annual corporate income tax. Also, at the same time, National Agency for Fiscal Administration issued Order 3735 regarding the issuance and amendment of advanced pricing arrangements. 
I will continue now with some details on what is different starting with the year 2015 and how these changes impact taxpayers part of multinational groups. As you can see on the slide, uh, starting with 2016, PP documentation requirements are divided now based on the category of the taxpayer and the value of the intercompany transaction. So basically, there are the large taxpayers who, if they uh, exceed the significance thresholds, that is the annual total value of intercompany trans transactions, including PP, for interest received or paid 200,000 euro, for services received or rendered 250,000 euro, and for acquisition and sales of goods 350,000 euros, if the annual value of these transactions exceeds the significance threshold, the deadline for preparing the file is the legal term for submitting form 101 for annual corporate income tax. And the deadline for preparing the transfer pricing file is of maximum 10 calendar days from the date of the request from the tax authorities, but no less than 10 days from the submission deadline. There are also the other large taxpayers who do not exceed these uh, thresholds, but if they do exceed the minimum significance threshold, that is 50,000 euro for interest, 50,000 euro for services, and 100,000 euro for sales and acquisitions of goods, um, the transfer pricing file shall be presented only upon the request of the tax authorities, and the deadline for preparing the transfer pricing file is between 30 to 60 calendar days from the date of the request from the tax authorities with the possibility of one deadline extension of maximum 30 calendar days. We also have the rest of the taxpayers which do not qualify as large taxpayers. There is no significance threshold provided, however, there is a minimum significance threshold that is 50,000 euro for interests and 50,000 euro for services and 100,000 euro for goods. Uh, if they exceed these thresholds, um, they must prepare their transfer pricing documentation file only upon the request of the tax authorities. The deadline for preparing is also between 30 and 60 calendar days from the date of the request from the tax authorities with the possibility of one deadline extension of maximum 30 calendar days. Basically, all these changes um, they are one step forward related to transfer pricing legislation in Romania and they bring a significant burden of proof for, uh, for the taxpayers who are doing intercompany transactions with the related parties in Romania and we also estimate that there will be a larger number of tax audits uh, ongoing from now on, and in this respect, I would like to pass on to my colleague Rivi Gurgiu to say a few words about tax audits in Romania. So, thank you, Anna Maria, and um, welcome to everyone. Um, like uh, it was said before, the issue of transfer pricing audits is quite a hot topic, as it is in Hungary. Uh, also, uh, for the Romanian taxpayers, transfer pricing audits have become uh, a hot topic and uh, quite a complicated uh, issue to, to manage. Uh, even though um, the legislation regarding the transfer pricing file exists since 2008, the actual transfer pricing audits have uh, started, uh, I would say, four or five years ago, uh, maybe since uh, 2012 or 2013. Uh, this was due to the fact that the, um, the Romanian tax authorities had to undergo a training process uh, in order to, to um, build specialized teams that would handle uh, these transfer pricing audits uh, and also they needed to, to, to get access to the databases which are generally used uh, to perform uh, benchmark studies uh, which are very important in the process of documenting uh, transfer pricing. Uh, now uh, it is uh, clear that the number of transfer pricing audits has increased 
uh, in the last years. Uh, but the issue that is worrying is that, of course, uh, these transfer pricing audits have resulted in uh, adjustments for the taxpayers. So in the most cases that we know, uh, the audits have, have uh, been finalized with adjustments and, of course, additional uh, corporate tax uh, burden for, uh, for local taxpayers. Uh, what you have here in the slide is um, some, some uh, uh, general information on how a transfer pricing uh, audit is initiated. Uh, and, of course, uh, we have uh, audits which uh, only focus on the transfer pricing issue. Uh, let's call them a standalone basis. And there are a couple of, of triggers for these, uh, these audits. Uh, what the Romanian authorities have been doing in the last one or two years uh, is uh, preparing uh, an internal risk assessment uh, in order to see which uh, taxpayers would qualify for the transfer pricing audit. Uh, and here we have uh, some very uh, basic criteria uh, of course, the focus is still on companies with operating losses. Um, in, the, in, the, in the eyes of the Romanian tax authorities, uh, group companies that have operating losses uh, are recording the, these losses somehow in relation to their intra-group transactions. So uh, the general view is that if you are a, a company part of a multinational group, uh, and if the multinational group is, is generating overall profits, uh, then uh, uh, the, the Romanian company is, is loss-making and then the, the authorities uh, see as uh, possible to, to make the adjustment in uh, Romania. So I think also in the, in the years the, to come, uh, the Romanian authorities will continue to focus on companies that uh, registered operating losses. Uh, then we also have companies which have a fluctuating operating result. Um, these, uh, these operating results can raise questions to the, to the, to the tax authorities as to what is happening uh, in the activity of the, of the company and if uh, these uh, results are somehow related also with uh, intra-group transactions. Uh, another category of companies is uh, the one that uh, has uh, delays in the payment of the tax liabilities, uh, not only in terms of transfer pricing, but uh, for other uh, uh, taxes as well. The, the local authorities will focus on this type of uh, companies because they see them as uh, a risk um, and therefore uh, audits uh, are performed for this type of uh, companies more urgently than for other uh, categories. Um, other criteria, um, what, we, what was happening in the last years was that um, uh, the tax authorities uh, have focused, for example, on certain uh, economic sectors. We had uh, transfer pricing audits for the, let's say, the big players in the pharma industry uh, a couple of years ago. Also companies in the oil and gas industry were audited. Um, companies operating in uh, the agricultural sector um, and uh, I would say also the large uh, supermarket chains uh, that are operating in Romania have also been subject to transfer pricing audits. Uh, some of these audits have resulted in uh, significant adjustments and of course some of these companies have um, decided to, to go to court to, uh, to settle uh, the, the, the adjustment uh, with uh, the tax authorities. Uh, another situation where uh, a transfer pricing audit can be triggered is uh, when a company requests a VIT refund. This is quite uh, uh, common uh, that the tax authorities, before uh, refunding the, the VIT amount to the company, uh, they also uh, want to see uh, that the company has a transfer pricing file and uh, they try to, to audit uh, the file to see uh, if uh, uh, 
the prices with related parties follow the arm's length principle. Uh, we believe that this is in practice uh, uh, a tactic in order to delay uh, the actual VAT refund because for this type of uh, audits we have uh, not actually seen a lot of uh, adjustments but uh, the, the authorities want uh, in practice to, to extend uh, the term of the, of the VAT uh, refund. Uh, there is also the situation where um, you have an unannounced uh, tax audit. Um, this can happen, uh, but not really for the large taxpayers, more for the companies in the medium or small uh, taxpayers categories. Uh, and again, the tax uh, authorities request the transfer pricing file. And um, as you could see from, from the, the presentation Anna made, the, the deadline for providing the file has been reduced significantly uh, for, for companies that are uh, outside the large taxpayer category we have between 30 and 60 days uh, uh, and for large taxpayers we have uh, 10 days uh, since the, the date of uh, request. I will move to the next slide. Now, what is happening in, uh, in practice during uh, a transfer pricing audit? Uh, I think uh, my colleagues from Hungary have uh, uh, mentioned uh, a number of, of issues which are also uh, applicable in Romania. Uh, generally, the, uh, the transfer pricing audit is not conducted by the local tax team, by the team that actually comes to the taxpayers to to check uh, the other uh, taxes like corporate tax, VIT or, uh, or withholding. But there are these uh, special teams, um, especially in the large taxpayer category, uh, that uh, have the uh, ability to and the experience to check uh, the, the local uh, reports. Um, at this time, uh, the master file documentation is not accepted uh, per se for local purposes, which means that uh, if a tech, local taxpayer provides the authorities with the master file, this will not be accepted. Uh, the local authorities are very careful, uh, especially in respect of the form uh, of the content of the, of the document. Uh, so they want to see that the local report includes all the sections that are provided by the Romanian legislation. So uh, in those cases, of course, we recommend to, uh, to the taxpayers to uh, adapt or localize uh, the master file for uh, Romanian purposes. Um, all the documents that uh, are provided to the authorities and all the information regarding the transfer pricing the report and analysis must be uh, provided in Romanian language. Um, this is, of course, uh, a burden for, for the taxpayers, which need to uh, translate uh, maybe a very large number of, uh, of documents and, uh, and information. Uh, this is why we recommend that the preparation of the, of the local report uh, is started uh, in advance of, of, the, of the audit in order to have the time to, uh, to prepare the, the report, but also this type of uh, supporting uh, documentation uh, such as contracts, uh, invoices, uh, all sorts of reports. Uh, that might uh, provide additional information regarding the transactions with related parties. So everything must be uh, submitted in uh, Romanian language. There have been cases where the, where the, the inspections teams have accepted uh, documents also in English, but I would say these are exceptions and uh, are not, uh, let's say, the, the rule. Uh, Another issue that we see a lot is related to benchmark studies. Uh, we know that a lot uh, of multinational groups uh, perform benchmark studies at uh, centralized level and they use these benchmark studies for all uh, companies uh, that fit a certain functional profile. Um, the issue is that uh, uh, 
the definition of the related party in Romania is a bit different from uh, what you have in other uh, EU states. Uh, so the ownership criteria is 25% instead of 50% that you see in, uh, in other states, uh, in Hungary included. Uh, so in, in this case, uh, some, some inspections teams try to use this, this argument in order to reject uh, the benchmark studies that are performed by the group uh, at uh, centralized level because they say that, that some of the companies uh, accepted in, the, in such benchmark studies are not uh, fulfilling the uh, independence criteria uh, provided by the Romanian uh, legislation. Uh, so this is why we always advise that the benchmark study should be uh, checked first against the local requirements before uh, providing the uh, analysis to the uh, Romanian tax authorities. Another issue that was mentioned uh, by my, uh, my colleagues from Hungary and it's still applicable in Romania is that the local authorities uh, in almost all cases want to test the local entity. Uh, irrespective of the fact that the local entity has or maybe has not uh, the more simple functional profile or uh, irrespective of the method that is used to, uh, to analyze a certain transaction, uh, the local tax authorities will always try to, uh, to test uh, the local entity because of course they are interested uh, mainly in the, the profit that uh, the local entity is, uh, is making. Uh, even though in, this is not uh, in line with uh, the uh, OECD uh, principles and the OECD guidelines, which are applicable uh, in, uh, in Romania, um, the, the, the local tax authorities uh, try to provide uh, all sorts of arguments for, for this approach and we even had clients that uh, uh, decided to go uh, to court against the local authorities because their, their method that was used uh, in several uh, EU uh, states uh, for other subsidiaries of the group uh, was not accepted in, uh, in Romania uh, as the local authorities only wanted to test uh, the local entity. Um, there is, uh, of course, a focus on uh, intra-group uh, services. Um, this is from, from two points. Uh, this is, uh, of course, from a deductibility point of view, because the local authorities are very uh, interested in checking uh, the benefit uh, that the Romanian company has based on uh, the services it receives from the group. Um, also the fact that the services have been provided uh, in, uh, in practice. Uh, so that from a, from a deductibility point of view, you would get uh, a, a request from a very large, for a very large number of documents and information uh, that need to be provided um, by the taxpayer in order to prove that such services have been provided and that there is an actual uh, uh, benefit. Uh, so uh, there is an ex uh, um, extensive documentation uh, requirement in this respect. Um, very similar to what Gabriela mentioned earlier, in some cases the groups fail to provide uh, such documentation to the um, Romanian subsidiaries and then of course the risk, the risk of uh, non-deductibility uh, is quite increased. Uh, now in, in terms of the actual transfer pricing analysis for services, um, we have seen a very limited uh, number of adjustments um, for uh, let's say low value added services. Um, but I would like to mention that um, in this moment, Romania is not actually applying the recommendations of the uh, EU forum for transfer pricing, the safe harbor for uh, low value added services. So uh, we have uh, had several cases of uh, audits where the inspectors did not uh, 
uh, agree with this uh, with this approach, which is also not included uh, per se in the local legislation, and they requested specific benchmark studies uh, even for uh, low value uh, services. Uh, with the increase of um, the number of transfer pricing audits, we have also seen uh, an increase of uh, the number of information requested by the tax authorities. Uh, just to give you a short example, uh, for a service transaction, if uh, two or three years ago it was sufficient to, 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 to benchmark uh, the margin, now the authorities are, are uh, requesting more detailed information, for example, regarding the cost base and all the cost base elements included by uh, the service provider, which is a group company outside uh, Romania. Uh, in this respect, uh, the Romanian authorities are cooperating with other uh, tax authorities, especially from, from the EU. And we also uh, see uh, an increase in the exchange of information uh, that they uh, have um, with other uh, tax authorities uh, in new countries. Uh, we have we had uh, uh, surprises where in case of several audits where the authorities have already requested uh, the information from uh, other tax authorities in order to support their uh, assessment uh, of the local uh, company. Um, they are the authorities are also looking, um, and I believe this is uh, this is also related to the to the approach uh, provided by the BEPS project. Um, they are also looking at the profitability of other group companies outside Romania, uh, which have transactions with a local company. So, in case uh, you have uh, several companies uh, outside Romania which have a uh, um, reasonable level of profit, but the local company is incurring losses, then of course the, the risk of adjustment uh, increases. Um, so uh, I think this is uh, one of the steps that will be made uh, more clearly uh, in the future, um, uh, while the, well, the BEPS project will be fully implemented in Romania, which is not the case yet. Uh, so we don't have at this time the country by country reporting uh, included in the local uh, legislation, but we do expect this to happen uh, probably uh, later this year or in 2018. Uh, the issue of the functional profile uh, of a company is uh, still uh, quite a challenging uh, topic to discuss with the tax authorities. Um, they are more or less conducting benchmark studies based on the activity codes that are used uh, by the local companies, the NACHE codes or the KN codes, uh, and are not uh, actually looking at the company's functional profile. Um, so uh, if, if uh, there is a challenge in this respect, it's quite difficult to, to explain to the inspectors that uh, even if the company has a certain activity code, it might not have the same functions and risks as the companies uh, they are trying to compare them uh, with. Um, there is also, uh, let's say, um, focus on uh, restructurings that we saw in the last years. If uh, the, the Romanian company has uh, went through a restructuring, which can mean reduction of activity or uh, increase of activity with several other uh, functions performing by the local company, uh, then uh, the, the authorities are likely to, to start an audit uh, to see the, the current uh, situation and transfer pricing is of course uh, an important point on the agenda to see if the local company is actually remunerated for the new uh, functions and uh, risks um, that it has. Um, to close, uh, I would just like to say that we also expect an increase in the number of uh, transfer pricing audits in Romania, uh, mainly for the category of large taxpayers. Uh, there was actually a, um, 
press release made by the local tax authorities uh, about two weeks ago that said that uh, the category of large taxpayers will be audited uh, in the following period and they are also trying to use uh, resources from all uh, regional uh, tax offices in Romania in order to focus on this uh, category uh, in the following uh, period probably this year and also uh, during uh, next year. Thank you and if you have any questions, uh, please uh, let me know. Uh, there's one question. Uh, I'll just read out the question for you. In terms of comparable search, will tax office accept companies with consolidated financial statements which eliminate related party transactions or the companies in the set must not have affiliates that are standalone companies. So, uh, um, in, in our practice, uh, so first of all, this is not uh, clearly defined in the local legislation uh, regarding how you should perform a, a benchmark study. So, here we only have the um, information provided by the OECD guidelines. Now, what we saw in practice is that uh, there were cases when the authorities have accepted uh, companies with consolidated accounts, uh, but also uh, cases where the authorities did not accept uh, such uh, such companies. So it's it's, it's really difficult to give a, a yes or no answer. Um, because also the practice of the of the tax authorities, I would not, I would say, it's not uh, the same for each uh, audit they perform, uh, making this a challenge for for the taxpayers that don't really know what to expect. Also in terms of the of, of the benchmark study, um, so we we try to to accommodate. Uh, both alternative is for alternatives, if possible, when we perform benchmark studies, but we don't have a clear uh, position from, from the tax authorities in this respect. 